pornography, one of my favorite topics, and a pretty controversial one in most relationships. In this video, we're going to get into, quite frankly, some of the benefits of porn and ways it can help your sex life and your relationship, as well as some of the trickier parts of it. Most importantly, how do you know if it's kind of slid, no pun intended, into a problem or even an addiction and what to do about that? That's what we're getting into in this video. So first of all, listen. There is always a role for pornography in our sex lives. It's been around since the beginning of time. Before there were movies, there were live shows. And it's fundamentally about sexual fantasy. That's how porn was originally designed. There is a role for pornography in healthy relationships. In just a minute, we're going to get into where that line can be crossed and when it can become a problem. But pornography can be something to be used to stimulate your imagination, to spice things up in your relationship, to give you some ideas of fantasies to try, to fulfill some fantasies that maybe your current partner isn't interested in acting out with you, but you still want to imagine. Or if you're single, obviously, pornography can be your best friend and primary sexual outlet in many cases. Now there is a potential downside to porn. And in just a minute, I'm also going to talk to you about some of the issues women have with pornography, because if you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't want you watching porn or gets angry when you watch porn or you have to hide it from them, we're going to get into that in a second. But let's first talk about when it actually can be a problem. Okay, so what tends to happen is that porn is fun. It's stimulating. And quite frankly, it's easy right? You don't have to worry about someone's sexual pleasure. You don't have to worry about performance. You don't have to put any effort in other than your imagination and your own self-stimulation. You don't have to worry about anything or anyone. And there's real relief there. There's very little pressure there. And it can be a lot of fun. Now that porn is so readily available on you know websites like Pornhub and elsewhere and free, as it became during COVID, there's unfettered access to an endless array of movies and images. And that can be a beautiful thing, but it also can lead to a slippery slope, once again, no pun intended, toward addiction. So how do you know if you're moving toward addiction? Put a pin in that, I'll get to that in a second. First, I want to say this. There are newer studies coming out because this is the first population of 20-something-year-olds who have moved through adolescence watching a lot of porn. Now, of course, every teenage boy, if he can get his, you know, hand, he was used to getting his hands on in the 50s, it was on his father's National Geographic. In the 70s, he was finding the joy of sex under his parents' bed or wherever they were hiding it or the Playboy magazines. Now you just go online. You don't need to go find your parents' stuff or your neighbor's stuff. You can get unfettered access and unfettered access teenage boys are getting. The problem is that it turns out pornography can have a real effect on the developing minds of of young men or people in general, but in particular of boys, that can affect their sexual function in the end. And we're also starting to see this happen with adult men, but in particular with teenagers because their brains are still developing. Because when you look at a computer, even looking at me right now, you're registering me obviously as a human being, but your brain is registering me as a 2D object, okay? So if you are developing as a young man and developing your sexual template, so to speak, as getting aroused inside your brain, the brain-body connection is happening through stimulation with a 2D image, an object basically, versus a live three-dimensional human being, what we are seeing time and time again is that it can be really hard to then get physically sexually aroused with a real woman. So something happens inside the brain where there is a rewiring where you can no longer get sexually aroused in the same way by a live partner. Now, obviously, that can become an issue. That's just from watching a lot of porn in general, okay? And we're going to get to, you know, how to alleviate this risk in a minute. Now, when it becomes an addiction, where is that line and when is it crossed? 
Basically, when you are no longer in the driver's seat, if you find yourself watching porn, even when you should be working or you set out to do a different task, if you find yourself at work, work, going to the bathroom and, you know, watching a little porn, taking care of yourself, or in many cases up all night, going again and again and again, if it starts to sort of feel like a compulsion that you aren't in charge of, that's a big red flag for addiction. Another one is to notice if you are depending on pornography, with a, which a lot of people do, especially as they're moving toward dependence and addiction, they're using pornography to distract themselves from their pain or their emptiness or their hopelessness or whatever it is that they don't want to be with. So start noticing if you're compulsively watching porn. Is it happening after you've just had a really stressful conversation or a stressful experience or you're feeling bad about yourself or you're beating yourself up or you're feeling lonely? Like what are the triggers and is there some consistency there you may see that actually you are using pornography in the same way alcoholics use alcohol or drug addicts use drugs to not be with that empty space inside yourself that you don't want to face and in those cases pornography addiction actually acts in a very similar way to other kinds of addictions the treatment is actually different Because obviously we don't want you going cold turkey forever on sex like you would on alcohol if you were an alcoholic. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about the issue that women, most women, have with pornography. I would say it's the rare exception of a woman who really, in a heterosexual relationship or even in a same-sex relationship who readily embraces and loves pornography. Some do, of course, but that's not the majority. And there are lots of reasons for that, especially when they are in relationship with a man. Now, the most obvious reason is that the comparison drama, right? She is imagining that you're looking at these perfect, huge bosomed women, (laughs) you know, and perfect bodies and doing these extravagant sexual things, and she imagines that she could never measure up. And quite frankly, she probably couldn't unless she's a porn star herself. So there is a fear of comparison. Now, what I try to help women understand, and you can try to help your partner understand, even show her this video, is that porn is a fantasy. So for 99% of men, if all of a sudden they turned around and the porn star that they've been self-stimulating to showed up on their door and wanted to get down with them, you know, they would hesitate. Or maybe some would say, yeah, let's go. But most of them would be like, yeah, in real life, I'm not really interested in this. I want to be with my partner. I love her. I'm attracted to her. I'm connected to her. I want to be in a sexual relationship with her. This is just fantasy. And it's not a comparison thing. The main place where I see men compare, if they compare at all, is in the lack of inhibitions and the openness and experimentation that we see in pornography. Many men wish their partners were more like that. But in terms of wishing her body looked differently or wishing she was that porn star, that's not really going on. The other big issue women have with porn is that they feel like it's taking the place of sex. And often, especially in the case of addiction, this is another sign of addiction, it is. You are finding yourself more prone to self-stimulate to pornography than to have sex with your partner, even when you're barely having sex with them and they're available for it. Now, it's one thing if your partner isn't available for it and you're horny and you, you know, want to get that release, but if your partner is available for it and wanting it and you are instead choosing pornography, that's an issue. And we see that very often in relationships and obviously that's going to be an issue for her. The third reason that women struggle with their partners uh, watching porn is because, and this is really important for guys to know as well, porn is while fun and fantasy filled and exciting is the worst possible sex education for what women really want and what turns them on because you'll see like in porn you know you slap her across the face or choke her or do you know barely touch her sexual centers and she's screaming an orgasm you know most real women Even the porn stars in their sex relationships, it's acting. They don't get off and have orgasms from being choked or being slapped or, you know, being kissed or having their breasts played with. You know, some 
get turned up. Certainly many people get turned on by that. But the screaming and she- shrieking in bliss while you're not even touching her erogenous zones or paying any attention to those is not real, even for the porn stars themselves. And so what I see happen so often is there's this frustration in women that he's treating me, you know, like he sees in the porn, he's stimulating me that way and it doesn't work and he expects it to work because he's seeing that in the movie. Porn is not reality, okay? So how do you use porn in a healthy way and avoid addiction? And what do you do when there might be an addiction? Okay, so the way to use it in a healthy way is intermittently, okay? Don't make porn your primary sexual outlet. So if you're someone who is going to tend to look at it several times a day or every day or for every time you're horny, don't. It's the same thing I told my teenage boys when I explained this to them. It's fine to watch porn as long as you know that A, it's not real life, B, it's not what real women like, and C, you keep both skill sets alive. The fed fantasy of pornography that just feeds you that 2D image and the brain fantasy where you use your imagination, even if what you're imagining is what you watched yesterday in a porn movie. That is fine because when you imagine something, you actually are imagining it in 3D, very different than when you're looking at a computer screen. So you can fantasize about a real woman, your partner, someone you see on the street, or you can fantasize about something you saw in porn recently. It doesn't matter, but exercise that part of the brain, make sure you keep that kind of stimulation going. In addition, even more so, so there should be like a one to three ratio for every time you look at porn, or let's just say one to two, for every time you look at porn, you should have at least two sexual scenarios where you're using fantasy or a real person, and then go back to porn if you're going to, so that you're keeping your brain primed for healthy sexual response. And the other is to really limit yourself. Now, if you think there may be an addiction and some of what I was talking about earlier is up for you, then you definitely want to seek help. And there are all kinds of sex addiction programs, but also individual sex therapists who treat sex addiction. It's a very different treatment than alcohol or drug addiction because while you will be asked to go cold turkey on porn, probably forever, but possibly not, depending on your recovery, you will not be cold turkey with sex. And you will be learning how to be sexual, either using fantasy, if you haven't been able to do that so far, and certainly with a partner. And there is a learning curve. And a lot of the treatment often involves, if you are truly an addict, and that will be part of the treatment, diagnosing whether that's true or not. If you do actually have a porn addiction, then often a huge part of treatment is going a little bit deeper underneath the surface to some of those wounds or parts of yourself that you've been avoiding by using the pornography. So it does involve facing some of your fears, your demons, your wounds, your traumas that may be behind and underneath the addiction. The good news is that pornography addiction is very treatable. There are so many resources available to you and it is not hard to recover if you commit to treatment and you follow through. So hopefully this whirlwind tour (laughs) of pornography has given you some guidance on how to use it in a healthy and fulfilling way and in a way that respects your relationship and your sexuality. Let me know what you want to learn about. What how-to video can I make for you next? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to this channel and follow the Language of Love podcast on your favorite platform.